Ho, ho, ho. Harpy Halloween. It's October 31st. Well, not actually. It's November 5th, 2019. It's Tuesday. It's Harp Tuesday. But I couldn't resist. This is definitely potentially a Halloween type piece. Um, it's This is a, a look at Freshure by Carlos Salzedo. So Zephyrs, or literally uh, night, the, the evening coolness. And it's kind of a cool piece with a bunch, basically it's all just glissandos. And the chief challenge, I think, in this piece is just deciphering what it is that he wants. So technically it's not super demanding, but it, just knowing what all these strange symbols mean. So that'll be a fun piece to look through and talk about. And even if you don't end up playing this piece, it might give you some ideas for yourself, for your own arrangements or compositions of just some different gliss options. So it starts off with these, these are just the multi fingers, right? We're just kind of running all our fingers up the strings, creating this interesting little effect. You'll notice that he gradually has us the first bar, right? Where we're basically octave, right? C to C, C, or sorry, C to G, I'm sorry. C, G, C to G, this octave and a fifth. And then it becomes two octaves and a fifth. As it gets louder. And then, oh, here we see for the first time the, the sort of sideways crescent moon shape. That's a fingernail shape. And that is a fairly universal shape in terms of harp notation. Oh, I gotta be careful because um, <laughs> I've not been doing a bunch of glisses. So it's so easy to get blisters because they go on a different area, at least for me, of the finger than a normal playing, so I don't have calluses. Um, so this this sideways half moon shape, crescent moon shape, is a fingernail indication. And in this case, what he wants is the fingernails of two, three, four, coming down, and roughly in this shape of uh, a third, with the next string beneath it. And this is the exact same pattern and shape that he's got in Song of the Night. I did an episode about that many, many years ago, a couple episodes, I think. I should have a link up here somewhere. And so we can try and hold that position. Imagine we're playing this shape. We're trying to hold that as we send our fingers down. I was trying to think about a good way to describe the hand angle because what we don't want to do is to have the fingers too far behind the knuckles. So if you think about it, what we're trying to do is we're trying to create sound with the fingernail, right? By having the fingernail push against the strings. So if we're too far, if we're 90 degrees, say, to the to the strings or less, we're gonna we are gonna hit with the fingernails, or we're gonna hit with the flesh in the fingernails. But at the same time, if we're parallel to the strings like this we risk the knuckles hitting before the fingernails or instead of the fingernails so i think what we're trying to do what you can think about it is trying to have the fingers go out and then bend back just a tiny bit right so that we're not um we're not this way and we're not this way but just kind of out and back so that you get this. It's nice, nice sound, right? So creating that shape between two and three of an extra space and going down like that. So we get a couple of those and they'll return towards the end of the piece. And again, if you ever have designs on playing Song in the Night, great to be able to do those. Then he has a foot, uh, footnote one, the thumb is Aeolian flux, the fourth is falling hail effect. So Aeolian flux is just his way of saying a normal gliss, right? So the thumb is gonna just gliss down as normal. And the fourth finger, I mean, how can we gliss the fourth finger going down? Well, falling hail is, is back of the fingernails. So we'll try to hold this um, a, a sixth apart, right? G to E. And gliss down and then two and three, just a normal, trying to hold them a third apart, going up. And then the same thing going down while we do two, three, and I'm gonna take it easy on these fingers, but obviously trying to get a really big crescendo and then a decrescendo. 
So this left hand, uh, I think it probably goes further than when I played it in the intro, right? It goes all the way up to here, I guess. So that it's not sounding as if a continuous gliss, it's definitely hearing a sort of overlapping in a sense. And then turning around the top and coming back down with this. And again, trying to get louder than that, I just want to <laughs> be gentle on my fingers at the moment. And then that pattern, this right hand pattern is going to continue for essentially the entire piece. And we're going to get some left hand harmonics. And remember, Salzado wrote the harmonics where they sound. We have to transpose them down an octave. We have to play them an octave lower. So this is written. It's going to be played down here. Right, so we're going one and two and three and... Well, here's the same idea as this one and four, but we're doing it with one and two. So a third apart, thumb is glistening as normal. Two, back of two. The fingernail. So, sorry, uh, one and two and three and four and five and and then we get a pedal change now one of the secrets to these harmonics is as we continue on the harmonics is being aware of those pedal changes and whether the string that we're playing is sharp natural or flat so this first sequence all natural so we've kind of if we've done that we've got a sense of kind of where those are it's going to start the same but then you're going to want to slide your hand up just slightly because by being flat the center of the string is a little bit higher the string is a little bit longer center is a little bit higher and then back down again because this is still natural so instead of if the strings are all natural on the pedal harp or all the levers are in the same setting as each of the strings that we're playing on the lever harp there is a sort of a, a common line of where we find the center of the string. Whereas as this gets flat, we go above that where we gotten used to and then down back again to the natural. Then we get a couple. So the top of this next page, right, we have to do an A flat. And then as soon as we can, we're also going to do a G flat. So we change and then immediately move the foot over and release the G pedal as well. So, sorry, oh, let's try that again. And so here, of course, they're all going to be flat. Great. So if we find that first one, we can kind of continue up on that. It's not parallel to the floor, but it's a slight incline. Getting very Halloween-y. A sharp and so my teacher and, and and I've continued to do this liked to write a symbol in front of a double pedal change in other words we've gone going from flat to sharp so that's not just down one or up one but it's down two so just as a visual reminder when you get to that that oh yeah right I is gonna require a little bit of extra effort and the fact that it's going all the way down or all the way up so that um, and here, right, this is going to be lower, up, and quite quite a bit lower, right? Oh, and then that A is natural. Then the box enclosing the lower pedal change, that's a sign for the left foot to play that. Left foot's going to move over. I did a couple episodes on this about using your left foot to reach over. And we're going to be able to change that way that both the G and the E at the same time. And now we're back to all natural. We can keep that left foot crossed over to that E pedal and we're going to push it down and the F down. Lower on the sharp. Up again. One and two. Oh, sorry. One and two and three and. And then flat. So up, down, middle, up. Etc. Uh, 
up, so up, middle, middle, up. So kind of remembering where you are. Then we get some more of these. Same as the beginning. We come back, we do some more glisses, it kind of repeats. And then the ending, uh, let's, um, let's get that ending here. So, and you'll notice, by the way, that Salzado gives you a scale at the beginning of each line, which I find a pedal chart easier to immediately decipher, but it's definitely a nice thing to have there just to be able to double check. Oh yeah, right. This is what my pedals are at that point in time. Um, so we get this last set of harmonics. So it's flat, natural, natural, flat. And then these. Softer. And then these, uh, let's see, so we've, we've started down here, right? And we can't go too fast because one and two, uh, sorry, one and two and Right, it's the same. Oh, sorry. Sorry, sorry. It's been a while since I've played this. That's uh, still bass clef here. So it's... And two... And... Uh, let me practice this, actually, because this is a spot where a lot of these glisses, I think we can be pretty free, right? With... Yes, he's got some very specific marks, and we'll try to accomplish that, right? So we try to start on this uh, E and G up here. Right? And try to go down to this C and this A and back, etc. But if we miss it, it's not so, so, uh, it's not so terrible. But for this ending, let's see what we have. I think we'll try and do one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, uh, five. And then this one's right here. We'll try to do that as, as almost a measured gliss, right? That so we've come up one and one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Try that again. Try that one more time. So from the gliss before, we've gone four and five and four and five and. And there you have it. So kind of an interesting piece. Again, as I say, a lot of the difficulty lies in just deciphering what these marks mean. And again, some of these glisses might be something interesting. Just that idea, for example, of a thumb sound, a normal gliss sound, even say just on a C, a C gliss, and a fingernail. So you could do one in four, slightly smaller spacing, one and three, smaller spacing as in the piece, one and two. And again, just some interesting ideas about glisses. So hope you enjoyed this Halloween themed episode of Harp Tuesday. I'll see you again in two weeks time. Cheers.